In war, there are no timeouts, no contrived popularity contests to decide life and death. This program is about the 83 young men of Class 234 and their six months long struggle to become U.S. Navy SEALs in a training course called Basic Underwater Demolition SEAL Training, or BUDS. BUDS is far more than another reality television survivor contest. There is only one rule to remember. It pays to be a winner. In the pre-dawn chill of Monday morning, week two of basic underwater demolition SEAL training begins. 50 students remain in class 234, down from the 83 men who began first phase. We're not feeling sorry for you because you had just about half this class quit last week. We don't care. Looks like we're down to 50. We lost a few people on the swim last Friday. Just didn't have the, what it takes to uh, tolerate the temperature. We are losing more people because they quit than we are because of medical reasons, which is what I want to see. I don't want to see a training program that's just beating somebody down. Anybody can make anybody run until they break. And that's not what this is all about. This is about giving them the same training that I went through and showing people, hey, I want to be here, I don't want to be here and letting them make that decision based on a choice, not because they're injured. I'm just thankful that we'd, uh, we'd survive and made it through the, uh, through the week. A lot of our classmates didn't. We're, uh, we're thankful to be here. I'm thankful to be here. Good weekend to rest. It was, uh, it was good just to get the extra sleep. Extra sleep with the body recovery. Feel good, feel good today. So, no worries. It's pain, a lot of pain, but it's just pain, you know, so. Whatever. This, this, this week and then we got Hill Week and then that's a, you know, the big obstacle. They had a week last week where they lost nearly half of their class. They're broken down. We don't want to just say, oh, here we are, we're the SEAL instructors, you can't keep up with us. We know you can't keep up with us. What we want to do is we want to make you strong. We're looking for more um, perfection. We want these guys to strive to do each thing perfect. If they're trying to do everything perfect, then they're going to get more out of it. So that's where we're at. It's not too bad. Pretty mellow, huh? Yeah, it's nice compared to last week. Last week was a kick in the nuts. Last week was kicking the butt to say the least. It was a nice introduction to first phase. Lost a lot of people. Got pretty broke down by the end of the week, but the weekend was nice for us. As Gettys takes roll call, morale is up after a weekend off to rest. Medical. We have, uh, Despite the cold, the students' main concern is getting healthy before hell This is Corman. A little chilly. I'm all right, though. Feeling good. Boss. I got severe, severe chafing in my, in my leg. Looks like hamburger. Car's going to medical. I just want to get rid of it uh, before next week. You guys up? Yeah, we're not normally like this. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, we are normally like this. The objective of week two is to prepare class 234 for Hell Week. The instructors know that surviving two weeks and a long day is a major milestone. Instructors understand that no student learns from constant fault finding, so now they subtly alter their methods. Who they are. <laughs> Along with the predictability of the stick, Class 234 now has the possibility of the carrot. Make sure we got the Hell Week schedule covered. We have an inspection, barracks and uh, PI, personnel inspection. So they're going to inspect our rooms, inspect our uniforms, pretty much everything in between. I can give them 10 minutes to get down there, I can give them 20 minutes to get down there, but if they're not ready to roll when they get there, it's probably because they goofed off on the weekend. And that's how it is. <laughs> pay or play, you know? We sweat through this a week ago. Dirty sink. You fail. Straight heads. Another failure? What's wrong with you guys? Their first two inspections are the hardest ones to pass. It should it get their attention and let them know we're looking for the tiniest things, you know? And they have all weekend, if they wish, to prep for it. 
Okay, that salt water destroys that life vest. And what is that? Life saving device. That's it. Take care of your gear, gear, take care of you, right? Yeah. Okay. Everything's got to be squared away. And we're looking for perfection. Good job. Yeah. By the time these, uh, they're out of phase, typically you come in for inspections and everything is really tight. You're bored as an instructor because they're, they're locked on. They know what you're looking for. They, they know how to snap too and they're squared away at that point. All right, that's single hit. You guys passed your room inspection. Good job. Yeah. Thank you. Two things we want to have accomplished in first phase. One is that teamwork and two is that attention to detail. You get wet and sandy before you come in and you get sand everywhere in your room. Good history. I realize that you guys come in here and you're wet and sandy, right? So how's sand not going to get in here, right? Yeah. But you're not going through your drawers, are you? Thank you. You did those the night before, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is this an inspection vest? Negative. I wear that every time we go for a swim or anything. Okay. Good job, Fox. Yeah. Check their haircuts. Take a look at them. You're responsible for them. As LP, class LPO, you're really the driving force. I'm the LPO first phase. That's my show. That's the show I run. Every SEAL knows that mistakes can be as deadly as an enemy bullet. When class leaders Geddes and Rivera fail to notice a posted schedule change, instructors use 62 degree water to reinforce the importance of attention to detail. We had a schedule change between yesterday and today, and uh, they didn't update themselves this morning by looking on the board. So the class leader uh, misled his class, went to the wrong evolution, and now they're, they're paying. I'm here to train you guys to be SEALs. Small little schedule change, right? <coughs> easy to follow, easy to track, pay attention. <coughs> I'm looking for guys who are tough. Now you've shown me to some degree you can withstand us some pain. So we're lacking on the attention to detail. Do it right the first time. Have some honor, have some integrity. I don't like to beat you down. I want to lift you up, make you strong, make you men, send you to war. We're gonna do some log PT. Keep your heads in the ball game. Focus, attention to detail. <laughs> Gentlemen, what do you think this log is? Why do you think I'm standing on your log blocking you from training? Any questions? Any ideas? <laughs> Rivera, drop. Rivera, why are you the only one dropped? I don't know what this log is. Because you've been here before is. and you know this is the smallest log out here. Instructors and students alike respect Rivera, but two consecutive mistakes in two consecutive evolutions is a red flag that cannot be ignored. How are we? three feet. Take that log, put it back, go get another log, get it down here. While the instructors are privately pleased to see Rivera looking after his boat crew, they remain irritated with his earlier lack of attention to detail regarding the schedule change. That is a short log. It is a simple message. He is the highest ranking enlisted man in the class. This is his third try at Bud's. He has 10 years in the Navy. With Hell Week approaching, instructors want to see Rivera take charge. As far as instructors being on my case, I, I don't really have a problem with that. They see something wrong with me, I, I just feel it's helping me out. Navy SEALs are a community of overachievers who seek a challenge and success in everything they do. This is a profession that demands intelligence and aptitude, as well as dedication. BUDS graduates continually score higher entry test scores than required for admission into officer commissioning programs and even the Navy's nuclear power program. 25% of the SEAL teams have college degrees. Yet years of study have failed to uncover why some men make it through BUDS and most do not. Are you getting any better from the first day, Ensign McGeehan? Oh yeah, I just passed on. You were shoot first day. I know why this yeah. just went and they got Fox in it. You're just a big <laughs> really puff. Oh yeah. You were the big fat really. officer shaking on the deck at my feet, right? Oh yeah, it's just your well, it, Is that body tightening up yet? Oh yeah, it's just your I hope so. McGeehan's boat crew wins the log races, and instructors single him out for remarks that clearly are meant as praise. Instead of the stick, McGeehan and his boat crew get the carrot. A lesson that instructor R intends for the entire class to share in. 
See, it pays to be a winner. Yeah. 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 You guys, you guys were kicking butt most of the way through this PT. About one of the only crews that I saw that stood out in my mind that was really putting out. Good job, guys. Yeah. So here's what I want you to do. Okay, a once every minute, I'm gonna raise my hand and you're gonna go first time every time, right? Yeah. You're gonna chant that nice and loud so the rest of them can hear it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I know it's hard. I hope you guys don't mess this up. <laughs> By midweek, nothing is funny, not even George Washington boat races. Class 234 is recovering from a 500 sit-up, 500 push-up penalty earned yesterday for arriving late to a formation. Hell Week is less than five days away. We weren't putting out as much as they'd like, and we were running late to evolutions, and there was an evolution on the schedule, and uh, we went to that evolution, but apparently it had been canceled, and we weren't notified. I don't know, I think it's just part of a mind game that they play. You can't put the blame on one person. One person's not going to make a whole class. Late. That was just our, our mix-up and something we won't be doing anymore. The class is weary, but unbroken. Get together, be motivated, stay positive, and uh, try to stay warm if you can. But do you guys understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, everybody. Yeah. We put out, we kick ass, they're more likely to give us an easier conditioning run. Still not gonna be easy, but if we drag ass the whole day, it's gonna be about eight miles running around the dunes. We got uh, IBS for a couple hours, then we got elephant walk for a couple hours, and then uh, we got log PT, and I don't know how long that is. Then we got a conditioning run. <laughs> and I think the day is finally over after that. Long evolutions, they all suck. So, plus it's cold. Bad day. This will be the last hard training day before Hell Week starts. Training will taper off to give the class some time to rest before the Sunday night breakout. The boat races are more elaborate, but the boat crew leaders listen carefully. Despite the cold, the class is motivated. I'm not gonna lie, I'm broken down, but I'm learning to push past that every day. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Just keep moving. I don't even notice it. it. Feels good. Get used to the pain after a while. 
between the chafing, the cold, muscle tension, you know. Booker, this is much better. We realigned things last night. We uh, discussed a few strategies before we came out today. Things are working pretty good. We still got a few things to work out, but there's no reason we won't be having an easy day here. We're not the biggest crew, we're not the strongest crew, but we've been coming together as a team really well, and it's paying off. 46 assigned, 40 present. We had a Schaefer DOR this morning. Um, woke up this morning out of bed and I just had a lack of motivation. I was tired and broken down. I'm 29 years old and I just didn't have that that fire, that energy to, to go on anymore with the training. Five more students quit. The boat crews reorganize themselves again by height. Students are eager to finalize boat crews before the long day begins. Down. Suddenly, Leg's boat crew is disrupted. Here, Walker and Prow nearly come to blows. Get over here. Push him out. Oh, oh, oh. As instructors oh, separate oh, the boat crew, oh, Hoffman is oh, down. That day. Oh, that was the day that, uh, yeah, it was a four mile time run, five o'clock in the morning or something, right? Remember that. And he went to the ER, he spent all day in the ER, and he came out of there, what they say you had? <laughs> They just said they Push him out. exactly what it was. They took me to the orthopedics when they took x-rays and they said they, it looked like I may have refractured a little bit of it where I had the surgery, but they didn't know. And that no one went in and did any operation on it. I just recuperated and then trained through it. Okay. As he questions Hoffman about the accident and the extent of the injury, Instructor M must decide if the injury is serious enough for Hoffman to be evacuated. And uh, basically the guy in front of him, the guy behind him, tripped and fell, and um, he's complaining of, no, actually this is back pain, but here's the history on this thing. This guy, Hoff, he's got history of, of is it L4, L5 fracture before he came into the Navy. And uh, they said when they, I, they, I took him into the ER the last time that he may have possibly refractured the same L4, L5 area. Now he's complaining of back pain in the same spot. I am it wasn't a sharp pain as much as a dull throbbing pain. But when it came down on me, I was just more concerned, as well as the corpsman being more concerned with the history. I've had a surgery in the past on my back, so that's where their concern came from. You know, I don't want to get rolled. I don't want to get dropped because uh, a lot of people worked so hard to get here and uh, have been working real hard while they're here. And it's just such a mental barrier to have to start all over uh, or get dropped completely. And uh, I know a lot of guys don't want that. When I got pulled in the ambulance, I told them I don't want to be rolled and I don't want to be dropped. Bro, I want you to fall out and grab those paddles and that boat crew behind you. With Hoffman safely evacuated, the instructors pass. quickly separate Prow and Hurry Shoemaker up. from Legs Boat Crew. Shoemaker and Prow tripped, causing Hoffman to fall. The instructor's anger is genuine. For every SEAL operator, there is nothing worse than causing another teammate's injury. Better to hurt oneself than a swim buddy. It is a core issue at the heart of SEAL team unity. What are you going to do, whack one of these guys in the head with the paddles now, Pro? Shoemaker. Gentlemen, you lost your weak link. There's no excuse now. No excuse now. You should be crushing this now. With Hell Week so close, right instructors now. fear the accident Everybody's might fracture the go. unity inside Legs Let's boat crew. Instructor Register pushes the students hard in the hopes they will not dwell on the incident. How come you're carrying these paddles? You can't hang on to that boat. That's the same as not keeping up with your boat crew. Yeah. They're carrying that big old boat, and you're just carrying a few paddles can't keep up with them on the boat. Hey, at least he's beating Mr. Shoemaker. You know what stays with you to your career as a SEAL? It starts here in Buds, your reputation. You're supposed to be their boat crew leader, aren't you? How can you lead them when you're carrying the paddles back here and you're not even putting out? Either put out and get up there with your boat or quit right now. Pull this in Hell Week right here, sir. Guess what happens? Bye-bye. Performance drop. This really, really sucks. We lost a really good guy on the stretcher. When you got one weak guy, somebody else, unfortunately, can't pay the price, and that looks like that's what happened. One guy didn't carry his load, and Hoffman has a suspect back as it is. 
you know, you lose the stallion. Somebody in my boat crew was not putting out and they hurt somebody else in my boat crew. Somebody wasn't pulling their weight, need to go away. They don't want to be here. They end up hurting everybody else. Is he alright, Hawkins? What happened to him? I saw a window and then he fell, fell down. I mean, they put him on medically, was he broke his neck or what? No, they just put him on the board and took him away. Legg's boat crew is summoned by the SEAL Proctor for Class 234. I'm supposed to be the liaison between the staff and the students, but it's more like that big brother aspect. And this whole time I've been talking to them about accountability and how they're accountable to each other. And obviously if a person's not putting out, if he's being a liability to the boat crew, That's not put then out. it stands to reason that he probably shouldn't be here. I just sift through it and I see what's just you know, petty animosity in what's really realistic in the fact that Hoffman, I know, is a put-out guy and he got hurt. Yeah, she make her go back into class. The proctor sends the officers away and questions the enlisted members about the incident. Mr. Leg, you can leave too. Oh, I'm hoping that the course will take care of itself and the guy will just quit. What's the deal with Shoemaker? He just hurt. I don't. Just hurt Shut up. Door. Shut up. I'm not here uh, to get this blind loyalty. Is he put out? He does when he can, Sir Cabal. Why can't he put out? He's been sick. Then why is he with your boat crew? Is he just going to go through medical? He had a follow-up this morning, Sir Cabal, and they sent him back out there. So he's going to go through Hell Week with you guys? That's, that's up to the doc. Who you on, Sir Cabal? All right. You shut up. The shoemaker put out. Be honest, put, Car. Don't give me the... Be honest. I see your eyes going left to right. He didn't seem like you put out today, Instructor Bo. He killed my back on the run down there, the elephant run. I want honesty. I'm being honest, Instructor Bo. Okay. You can carry Mr. Shoemaker through this evolution, and one of you guys is going to get hurt. That's what statistics show, okay? And I appreciate your loyalty, Walker. You're a good guy. But I don't want him to go in the hell league with you guys. And if you guys can't be man enough, or men enough to tell me, hey, he's a liability. And this is not a group him. vote against Shoemaker. Me, right? Bud's training is the only military now. training where right? officers right? and enlisted okay, are trained to together. Out. Trust in leadership is essential for unit cohesion. I hope he's okay. In the meantime, stand by for log PT. Hmm. Dude, I got news for you, man. We always win. We're not stopping now. We're bringing you guys, we're trying to invite you guys in on the party. I always went on logs. I haven't had one day of logs. I haven't been on a winning ticket. There you go. Then why just don't don't break a streak, then? You know what I'm saying? Oh, we're just running, and this, uh, some of the people gave out, and the boat came down on me. Uh, my back had this pain for a while. I couldn't move, get up, uh, so they took me in, uh, took X-rays, came back negative. They uh, looked at everything. It was it seemed all right, just real tight and real sore may have strained the muscles in my lower back so uh, they did some therapy on it I stretched it for about an hour and then uh, told them I wanted to get back with my class up, down, up, down. predictability causes expectation expectation can create a lack of attention to detail take your boat crew go around the beach marker and get back here on your log. And I said, but don't do anything more, anything less than what I tell you to do. <laughs> yeah. Right shoulders this one. Axe, don't say it. When Kolarov's tired boat crew begins a race without their log, the instructors wait for the class to return to punish them for a failure in concentration. Get this log up in the center arm. Get it up. Get it up. Oh, why did you not take that log around the marker? Because they didn't say take the log. He said, what do you mean he didn't take, say take the log? He said go down around the marker. Are you sure? Yeah. Isn't this log? Are we paying attention? Yeah, 100% positive. Attention to detail. What, what, were, what was? Right hand shoulder position move. Right hand shoulder position. Right hand shoulder position. Right hand shoulder position. Right hand shoulder position. He said. Feet. Get your crew. Feet. Go down around the beach marker. Come back. And there's people who start down here. The, like the one guy needs to, will end at the six and two and five, vice versa, because we're starting behind them. But yeah, that was all I said. So you're thinking log. you're right and everyone else is wrong? Honestly. But yeah, I never said it was the log, Mr. Director. Well, I only, only got to say this. You are right. Good job. Right here? Yes. 
Hey, Colorado, have you guys in right position? Down low, down low. No, you guys are out of position. We're not with the first one. I know, that's the last one right there. That's the last one. Yeah, I know, that makes you happy. I just said take your boat crew, go around the beach marker, nothing else, and switch those spots, correct? You made the assumption that you should take the logs. However, there was one boat crew out of you who was paying attention to detail. Don't let the little things slip past you. You will learn attention to detail while you're here. You will learn it. I promise you, you will learn it. Hold down. I got to do something. Hands, feet will follow. It is the final evolution of the day, a four-mile conditioning run. Class 234 is tired. Without being told, Rivera is patrolling the back of the pack, forcefully pushing slower students forward. This is a welcome sign for the instructors, who have been watching and waiting for Rivera to respond to their challenge. Rivera is rising to the occasion and taking charge, pushing others to perform at a higher level. After eight days of training, Rivera has crossed a hurdle and is asserting himself as a leader. Despite Rivera's efforts, the conditioning run will coldly expose the injured, the slow, and anyone suspected of not putting out. In the truck. Are you putting out? You're hurt, right? You're hurt, but are you putting out? I'm pulling out. Look where your class is. Yeah. Look where you need to be. <laughs> Mr. Gray, you have something new going on? I can't catch my breath. You can. Green has been to medical for lung problems, <laughs> although instructors suspect that he may be overstating his symptoms. You have eight seconds to be right in front of me. Five, four, three. <coughs> What's your problem? Uh, I have no breath at all. Screen, get over here. Go see the corner. Put your hands out your head. Go see the corner. Give me your finger. Let me see if you can continue this run. Let me consult my machine of knowledge. You can't stand up. You're incapable of standing up, is that what you're telling me? By leaning on the door like that? I wanna run. You wanna do what? Run. Then why aren't you? Doing as best as I can. This program is not doing as best as you can. It's doing better than you can. Pushing yourself. I get people at sick call in the morning that have been sitting on their asses for a half hour. Their, their pulse is higher than yours right now. And your pulse ox is worse than yours. So why don't you just keep running? Oh yeah. And, and sir, if you feel that you need to fall down, fall down directly on your face. Oh yeah. All right. Go. Instructors have lost confidence in Green. It will be difficult to escape their attention unless he improves his performance. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Catch up with the pack, Mr. Green. Hurry up. Don't fall back. It's on the radio. Uh, to ski. <laughs> The running song. Seven, 198, 196, something like that, max. 
So you take 80% of that. Was he, was he brief? <gasps> Doing that game? Drama. More drama than Shakespeare. As the class prepares for an ocean swim, the Smurf crew has regrouped after Hoffman's accident. 234 is ready for whatever comes next, including Hell Week. Excellent, excellent. Little horse, a lot of yelling, but no worries. Back's a little stiff too, my fox. <laughs> Are you and Walker's boat crew for Hell Week right now? Yes, I am. And what's the name of that boat crew? Smurf Crew. Can you tell me why that's called like that? Because we're the shortest ones, but we're the hardest ones. Please. You're too tall for the Smurf Too tall, crew. Too, too proud. proud. Well, who's your coxswain? Uh, Ensign Leg right, right here. Papa Smurf. Papa Smurf. Well, I was in class 233, <clears throat> and Saturday morning before Hell Week started, I had to go into the hospital. And I just kept thinking the whole time, God, I better get out of here before Hell Week starts. And when I didn't, I was like, oh, damn it, now I'm going to get rolled. I don't want to be rolled. But it was pretty tough, but I mean, it was a good time going through it with all these guys. You know, there's a lot of fun in it. And at Surf Passage was a lot more fun this time with all the big waves and stuff. You know, so I had a good time with it, at least. You know, I guess we get to go through a colder Hell Week than I would have wanted to, but oh well, it happens. <laughs> Basically what happens with these guys for the worst phase, they get times to meet and they'll struggle with their swimming for a while. Some of them will pick it up quicker than others. The ones who do will, will make those time restraints and move on. The ones who don't will, will eventually, uh, if they get enough failures under their belt, they'll uh, be sent in front of a phase board and then uh, on to an academic review board uh, where their fate will be decided. Quitting training can be difficult, but it's a decision. Injuries, however, leave no choice. To be injured can be heartbreaking for the man left behind. I got rolled for uh, double stress fractures in my right shin. It just sucks not being able to go through it now. I'll have to watch them uh, go through Hell Week and not be there, and uh, graduate, not be there. The guys are out there right now, and uh, I'm stuck here, walking on crutches. BUDS has its own procedures for dropping a student based on poor performance. The phase board is the first step for a student to be sent to an academic review board, which then has the authority to performance drop him from training. You give everybody an opportunity to show us what they have in the first week. Now we're starting taking a look at, we know where guys are standing, and all the phase board is, is letting them know if they're having problems, they need to pick it up in these certain areas. There's plenty of guys who have that potential to get phase boarded, but Again, that's not the uh, end of buds. It's a wake-up call for them. McPherson, you know why you're here? Yes, sir. Okay, this is a phase board, and we're reviewing your record, and we're looking at your performance. You're not having a problem with the obstacle course, and you're swimming fine, but uh, your run times are unsatisfactory. Yes, sir. You're under perfect conditions. You ran a 36-32. Yes, sir. Usually, I'm in the middle of the pack, and I'm, I'm doing fine. I passed a run before. Go ahead and step out of the room real quick. Yes, sir. What are we doing? What's that? Keep it. Okay. Yeah, you can come back in. Just pop it back in. McPherson, I want to take you to an ARB. You know what that is? No, sir. That's an academic review board. But uh, Senior Chief Linky and Chief Taylor talked me into keeping you in training. Thank you, Senior Chief. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it again. Yes, sir. You understand what that means? Yes, sir. It means you better get your ass in gear, get over this hurdle, and you're going to be gone. Yes, sir. All right, get out of here. Thank you. That's what I heard. Ensign Jeffrey Green, reporting is ordered. Mr. Green, we're here to talk about your run failures. Yes, sir. As well as your uh, performance during conditioning runs. Yes, sir. Yesterday at the end of the conditioning run, they had a heart monitor on you? Yes, sir. A new finger monitor. What was your heart rate? I don't recall specifically, sir. 102. 102. That's, you should be probably in the 150 range, completing a conditioning run. Oh, yeah. You've been sick? Correct. You've been cleared by medical as, right. fully, as full duty? They gave me full duty. Yet your four-mile time run is 39 minutes. Correct, sir. Which is almost a 10-minute mile. I'm an above-average runner, and I just have not fully recovered from the pulmonary edema from last week. 
You don't have a problem doing the obstacle course. Um, do you have to yeah. breathe when you do that? Who oh, yeah. Do you have to breathe when you swim? Who oh, yeah. So why can you do those but you can't run? I don't know why that's the case, <coughs> sir. Do you think it's a medical problem? I do, sir. Honestly. Honestly, sir. Okay, would you step out of the room for me? Yes, sir. Let's let's have medical take a look at him before we make a decision. What do you think? He can't control having pneumonia. That's right. Send him to yeah, let's have him go to medical. All right, Mr. Green, we're going to have you checked out by medical because the numbers don't jive. Yes, yeah, sir. You know, if they say there's absolutely nothing wrong with you, I got to go with what they say. All right, get out of here, for the of course. We want to make sure that this guy is, you know, okay. I had to step up to the table, Mr. Shoemaker. You know why you're here, Mr. Shoemaker? Yeah. Tell me. Performance. And what? Uh, runs. Your run times are horrendous. The first two times you ran the obstacle course, you couldn't even get over the high wall. Is that correct? It was the first time. The second time, sir, was uh, I was at medical. For what? I uh, had pulmonary edema last Thursday. You had a little chest cold? Negative five. Pink blood and stuff coming out of my nose, coughing it up. Uh, so is that why your run times are so poor? You got to start to burn this part of the problem. Did you have pulmonary edema Monday morning this week? Some residual effects of tenant birds. How about your first obstacle course? No excuse for that. Just forearms burn out on the, uh, the Your high forearms wall. were burned out on the, on the high wall. It's the yeah. third obstacle on the obstacle course. Yes, sir. The first obstacle is parallel bars, which requires little or no grip, right? Yes, sir. The second obstacle is the low wall, which requires little or no, little grip. Or no grip. Yes, sir. So where did your forearms get burned out? Couldn't tell you, sir. Just... What are you doing in your boat crew? Uh, right now, I'm in Mr. Legg's boat crew. He's a senior man, so I'm just... I'm are you one of the strongest guys in your boat crew? I'd say I help out, but no, I'm negative. I would not say I'm the strongest man. Are you the weakest man in your boat crew? Certain things, yes, sir. So that'd be a yes. How does yes, it make sir. you feel? It's unacceptable. We've been told by guys in your class that you're a good guy. We don't doubt that at all. You're probably a great guy. But... As you probably know already, this is not a popularity contest here. This is a lifestyle. Okay, you, you're not a SEAL from 7 o'clock in the morning to 1600. You're a SEAL 24 hours a day. This is a way of life. This is what you live every day, 24 hours a day. It takes that kind of commitment. The heat's getting turned up, and you're not getting it done. So, we're going to take you to academic review board. To join the class, sir? Yeah, get out of here. Yeah. We gotta get out there, of course. How's that? Are you hanging your heads in shame? Got no pride, been whipped? We done whipped you good. Get your goddamn heads up! Look training right in the eye, grit your teeth, and knock out your push ups like you're supposed to do. Head hanging is for girls. Every tradition at Bud's revolves around winning. Losing is unacceptable and is punished severely. Each week is designed to be more difficult than the last. Of all the weeks in Bud's, Hell Week stands out. Its sole purpose is to separate the weak from the strong in a ritual every seal must endure and no seal ever wants to repeat. On me, ready! Mike and Holly, they're doing real well as students. Both of them are good leaders. I don't anticipate any problems for either one of these guys. I plan on seeing both these guys after Hell Week. Class 234 has endured physical and mental limits they never imagined. Hell Week will claim almost half of the 39 students that remain. What the? <laughs> I don't know, just sing songs, play games, screw with the instructors, uh, <laughs> have fun, do whatever. I really don't have much of a plan. Right now our mission is to go out there and get our boat, and get rigged up, ready for off portage. So that's what we gotta do. That's all we're thinking about right now. Just thinking about uh, keeping with my swim buddy, getting down, the, getting the boats, and getting out there in the surf, start paddling, get ready to do rock portage. 
First of all, you don't have to wake up in the morning. That's the hardest part of the day. Second of all, they feed me four times a day. I don't have to stay on room inspection. And no time to evolutions. So Hell Week is, act to me, Hell Week's one of the easiest things I can do in Buds. We're just saying how many instructors we're going to get to DOR. <laughs> not sure, but maybe we'll put a couple on IR or something. But just have fun with it. Try our best to make it through. To me, this is his first real chopping block. And if 39 guys are there at the end, that's, that's, that's part of the group that I want to be with. But if not, that's still the part of the group that I want to be with. What's your motivation when you're in there, you know, freezing your butt off and you're, you're, you're going numb? You know, what are your, what's your thought process? What's your motivation to stay there? You have your own thoughts. You have your own incentives on getting through it. Everyone has their own reasons on why they want to be here. Uh, they're all legitimate reasons. You just got to dig down and figure out why those reasons are worth it. This is a, the gut check, so to speak. Stay together. There's no reason we all can't come out. Uh, we're together, but it's always a competition between boat crews. Pace to be number one, and we're going to be number one this whole hell week. Damn right. I'm right, just going to take a moment by moment, enjoy every moment, take it for what it's worth, and uh, learn from it. I said if we all make it out in my boat crew, my wife's going to cook a meal for us and uh, have some beer together. So. I'm going to put out everything I can. i to admit I'm nervous. First time ever going through anything like this, but I've uh, waited a long time in my life to do it, so I'm excited too. I'm very nervous. Well, do you think it could be any harder than the last two weeks? <laughs> It'll definitely be harder than the last two weeks. A lot harder. I don't know how hard, though. I've never done it before. Well, I haven't done a hell week before, but uh, it'll be interesting. I've never quit anything in my life, so, you know, this is my goal. As ready as I'm going to be, so. Want to get started? This is kids, kids don't, try. don't try this at home. The first evolution of Hell Week is called Breakout. It is the beginning of five straight days and nights of mental and physical evolutions designed to simulate combat stress. Hell Week represents a separation from everything these young men have ever known. Although SEALs tend to minimize its significance to their overall training, Hell Week is an initiation for those who make it through and the end of the road for those who don't. Time will tell who will fail and who will be left behind when the winter hell week of class 234 fades into memory six days from now. Okay, you guys, the paint layers have it done tonight. All right, so for this evolution right now, prepare to down log. We don't really know how old this log is. This thing's been around as long as anybody can remember. 186, that's my uh, class number there. We had to carve that in the log so that somebody set it to see and it, it always returns, it's like the boomerang log. People have set fire to it. I think people have hauled it out in the desert and heard one time and it, it came back. Some frogman found it and dragged it back. It, it's, it's never gonna go away.